Hey guys, Thomas from Team Soccer also here. Come at you guys with another five cards to have in your trade binder for July. I apologize for being a couple days late on this. Life happens. I kind of ran into some complications. Didn't manage by time the best. So you guys are getting this a couple days late. So I apologize about that. If you guys are new to the channel though, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, if this video gets 60 likes, I will do a part three in July. There is also going to be a top five hobby league cards coming out very, very soon because a lot of people have been asking me about hobby leagues and I decided to have a whole separate video on that. So be tuned for that. Also, if you're buying any cards off TCG Player, like the five I'm mentioning here, please use my affiliate link down in the description below. It helps out the channel to know what this will cost you. I want to give a huge thank you to those who actually do use my affiliate link because, you know, being an adult now that I have to pay for all these bills and all that, a little extra money helps or I can have more money to put in the channel, which is usually where it goes. Uh, so I just want to say I appreciate that from you guys. Also, considering being a YouTube channel member, I want to thank, give a shout out to all my YouTube channel members. I actually just want to give a huge thank you to all everyone who decided to give me anything. So I really do appreciate you guys a lot. And we're going to get right into this five cards on your trip. Now, the first card I have here is actually Dark Arm Dragon. And this is from the 2009 Gold Series. Now, the reason why I'm telling you guys to pick this up is because light plays are about six and a half dollars. New mints are about seven fifty. Uh, Dad is slowly creeping up. This was about a five dollar card around a month ago, and it was a little cheaper uh, uh, before then. I see this card slowly but surely going up, especially because, like I said, Gold Series 2009. That might not seem too long ago, but that was 2009. That is a 12 uh, old series, and this is was actually one of the more accessible versions of Dad since that was a bit of a Difficult card get back to in like Teledad format and all that. So this act this uh, version actually gave players a more accessible version. Uh, this is also a preferred version for older formats after Teledad as well. Along with it's up there as one of the highest rarities of Dad. That's like below thirty dollars in my opinion, uh, because you have the original secret and the ulti. Uh, personally, what I would do is I would grab a place of this, especially because. This card could slowly creep up to about $10, $11, $12, especially if it ever goes to two because while that is a strong and great card, we are at a point of Yu-Gi-Oh where good doesn't really cut it to being on the ban list anymore. You kind of have to be busted. So I think something like Dark Arm Dragon can go to two. And if it does, I think a lot of people are going to try to figure out a way to play like a very odd version of Teledad. It's kind of going to be like a bootleg version of Teledad in 2021. People are going to be trying all these things. And with two dad, I think it's possible. Uh, although three would be a lot better. I think two is still possible. Along with that is still a very good card. Being able to pop three your opponent's card and banish and darks from the grave, which can also get you effects. It's a very good generic dark card. And it's always going to be considered in dark uh, uh, type decks. So, uh, so make sure that you have your copies while you can. Now the second card that I have for your five cards have your trade binder is actually Gil. Uh, I'm gonna mispronounce this heavy, by the way. Gillet Gearfried, the Magical Steel Steel Knight. Okay, I actually think I did pretty well. These are a dollar fifty for the ultra rares, and I want to talk to you guys about how much of a crime that is. This is a very recent ultra rare out of a new set. It is a fusion monster, and it is an extremely collectible card. This is probably one of the best penny stocks that I would invest in that is below like $2 at the current moment. I see this card going up to about $7, $8. Uh, it is also a super poly target as well, although it is a very bad super poly target since it takes two warriors. However, we never know what's going to happen in the format. Uh, you know, to give an example of this, we never know that Droll is going to be a must of or not even sighted. That's a, good, that's a good example. We never really know what's going to happen in the meta and what can be good and what cannot be good. So I would get your copies while you can for this, but it's mostly for the collectability, not really that it would see play in the meta. But I will tell you guys, you are going, I, while I do recommend you guys at least like five, six copies, I probably would uh, warn you that you guys are going to hold onto this for a while. This is a great penny stock because it is something from King's Court, which is a set that sealed is going higher. And whenever a sealed box goes higher, the cards within it usually at least most of them get a boost especially a collectible ultra like this i feel like a lot of people are focusing on a lot of the other ultra special ones that seem a little more generic but for a dollar fifty and this card was selling at 12s on pre-release i see this card just slowly but surely going up to maybe five six seven dollars so i would definitely grab your copies while you can because i think this is an amazing card to have and is prime target for a buyout as well since anyone who has a little bit of money can see this as a collector uh rare ultra and be like huh you know i want to spend you know maybe i won't buy it out completely but i'll buy out a hundred because that's only about 150 dollars you know since they're about a dollar fifty 
uh, and a lot of people would buy accounts a lot higher than that. You know, that's one thing. But if someone actually goes in with deep pockets, like a thousand, they want you know they want to get a thousand copies, five hundred copies. That is going to severely shift this ultra, especially because a lot of people know that it's underrated now as well. So this card has so much room to grow. I would definitely grab your copies while you can. This is not something I would wait for. I would definitely get it this instant. Now the second, well not second, third card I have in this five cards I have your trade binder is Elemental Hero Thunder Giant, and this is from Mattel series actually. Now lightly plates are four and Yermans are seven to eight dollars, but I recommend the lightly plates mostly because not only is it only half the money, but Mattel series is very finicky to the point where it's very also hard to PSA. It's almost impossible. You got what you think is a very good copy, and you get a PSA like seven, six. I've seen PSA fours. Uh, of Mattel series, so I would definitely go and get a lightly played in seven year mint because not only is it going to save you a lot of money, but it's, you're practically getting the same thing since they basically look near, uh, closer near mint normally, just not really good in the uh, you know uh, process of grading. So just be wary of that. But the reason why I tell you guys to get Mattel series is because we've seen a lot of Mattel series buyouts and we've seen a, a lot of stuff from Mattel series like shine like Flare Wingman for example and all the normal elemental hero monsters. Go to numbers that I believe nobody should be paying for them. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, two, three, four, five hundred, even more. With Wingman, it's almost impossible to find a copy under a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. Um, and that's not on TCG either. On TCG, I think there's one listing for ninety five hundred. Uh, but I believe that you can find it for a lot cheaper. Still not enough that I would buy it for, but you get the point. This is another Elemental Hero Mattel series card, and this is five dollars. So if we look, say, five, six years in the future, where can Mattel series in general be? I think it can go to the moon. Uh, personally, I see them actually, this card, going to about $100 within the next two to three years. It is a great $5 Elemental Hero card to get. Although, with the way Yu-Gi-Oh! works nowadays, since I believe 2019, we're more in a buyout culture. So anywhere between these two, three years, it'll be $5 one day and the next day it'll be like 50. You never really know, but this is a card I would definitely get a place it of while you can. I believe it's a very, very cheap elemental hero to have. And I think it's something that I would say is a staple from Mattel series. I do want to go deeper into Mattel series eventually, but that is the definitely one of the best lower end cards I would buy from Mattel series. Since sometimes buyouts work, sometimes they don't, but for elemental heroes, they normally stick at least relatively well. I think lightly played for $4, uh, four to five dollars is a steal. Now the fourth card to have in your five cards have your trade binder is actually Winged Karibo level nine, and I am telling you guys to get the promotional from GX. Lightly plates are three dollars, near mints are four, and why am I telling you guys to pick this up? Well, one of the reasons is because Wing Karibo kind of has more of its own archetype, especially compared to Karibo, and you know Wing Karibo played in my opinion more of an impactful part than when you look at like DM era and original Yu-Gi-Oh and all that because it, uh, it got a lot more cards. It was used in, a, in more duels. At least that's how it felt to me. I bet the original Yu-Gi-Oh probably has Karibo in more duels. But when I was watching GX, Wing Karibo and the cards like Transcendent Wings had a lot more to do with the duels uh, than comparing it to the original Yu-Gi-Oh. But not going in circles here, the reason I would get this card is because for a GX manga promo, we've seen stuff like Thunder King get bought out, and we've seen other cards get bought out as well, or increased to around $15, $20. For a Wing Karibo card, since the only higher rarity of this is a secret rare, and it's not an original secret rare, I believe this is going to have a lot of collector value. Getting these at $3, $4 is really good, especially because if Wing Karibo ever receives any more cards or something like that, people actually might want to play some type of deck with Wing Karibo, since they are very... They're not the most difficult to get out, and but they are very high level. So you could go into like trains, which are very good rank, uh, good rank ten edge or rank nine, nines that we have a, a couple of very very good rank nines as well. Since this is a level nine, but some of the wing Karibos like level ten is a rank ten. You guys get the point. It's gonna be a uh, maybe like a rank nine, rank ten X Y Z engine. We don't know, but this could get f future support. And it's a collector card. So the reason why I would all get this besides those two reasons is because looking at GX era cards, they're very hard to replace, especially promotion cards. Whatever we kind of have on the market is kind of whatever we have. And this has less than 25 listings at the time of making this video. So, and this is including moderately plays and worse, mind you. So I would get your light play or near mints, mostly probably near mints because it's only a dollar difference. Although if you find light plates for three and your mints start going up to like seven, eight, lightly plates for three is not bad at all. In fact, I think anything below, you know, seven, eight dollars for a light plate or near mint is a very good price for this card. 
Uh, these can definitely skyrocket, so I will get your copies while you can. Now, the last and final card before I get into it, I just want to say, remember, if you guys haven't smashed that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, hopefully today's day or your subscription, I'm actually aiming for 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and we're at almost 1,550, so hopefully we can reach that goal, but... Getting to the last card here is Book of Moon Ultimate at $140. Now, I know this five cards out of your trade battle was a little cheaper, but I think these are just amazing picks. But the reason why I would get Ulti Book of Moon is because, number one, it's quickly going up to 200 And this is a card that is used in uh, GOAT format, which a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players actually play GOAT solely, if not as their main. Uh, you know, because of how, you know, skill-based is and just how fun GOAT format is. It is a format of that will never die. And high rarity GOAT format is something that's always going to exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! Even if this card game ends. Ulti Book of Moons, especially something out of OTS Pack 13, which, which is really funny to say that's three OTS packs ago, was a $50 card that went up to $100, and I told you guys to get them at $50. Uh, if you did, congratulations, they're $104 now. So if you got a playset, which I recommend it, and I still recommend now, you basically made $270 worth of trade. So, I want to give a quick second of this video to say, awesome job, great pickup. But the reason why I would still get these at 140 is because this is a card that is geared for $300 plus. This is quickly going up to $200 as well. And if this card ever decides to go to two, uh, all hell is going to break loose and this is going to go 300 instantly. Because uh, Konami already released their Lightning Overdrive, you know, Sub-Zero Book of Moon that, while I still think it has potential, they really did hinder the card with the wording and the cost and how it's not it's not up to two, but it's two cards that you have to put face down. But not to digress too much, Book of Moon is always going to be a card that is, can find its way into the meta. And if it definitely does, ultis are going to go up. But I'm telling you guys to mostly get for the collectability. This is a card that is guaranteed to go to 300 eventually in its lifetime, especially probably within the year, within probably the next year you know 365 days maybe even the end of the year see how because by the end of the year it's definitely gonna be 200 so i would get your copies while you can because there's it's very every time someone lists below 140 it tends to sell very quickly so if you guys enjoy this five cards on your trade binder make sure to smash that like button subscribe if you're buying any of these five cards out of your trade binder please use my foot link down in the description below it helps out the channel to no additional cost to you and consider being a youtube channel member if you want to follow me on instagram uh Twitter, all that, that, those are in the description below. And let me know in the comment section below, what is your favorite card out of this five cards having your trade binder? And I will see you guys in the, the next video. Peace.